This is a chapter on the control sources and how they're used. We did already uh, work with uh, the vast synthesizer assigning to the take six samples a parametric equalizer. And we've seen both when we did the dual marimba uh, and uh, a controlled delay, and when we did this take six with the, the mod wheel assigned to the parametric equalizer frequency, we touched on the control source list. This is one list that you really want to get to know uh, in order to um, uh, finish learning about all the possibilities of VAST. We need to know how we can control the DSP functions in these variable algorithms. And we've already seen the simple ones about how to assign uh, 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 sources uh, to the uh, effects. Right now I'd like to go and do another example. Let's start with the, uh, not the default program, but let's start with some programs that were put in the ROM uh, just for starting uh, what are called the VA1 uh, programs. So let's start with a template program that's in the ROM, number 1021, VA1, Naked Saw Poly. If we uh, edit this program, we'll see that the key map is silence. Well, there's no sample playing at all in this key map. Well, how is that? Well, uh, if we look at the algorithm page, we'll see that the very first block says saw. So it's not a filter or a parametric equalizer like we looked at before or any of the other 60 some odd possible uh, combinations of, uh, of digital signal processors. This is a waveform in and of itself. This is a model of an analog waveform, sawtooth, generated by the synthesizer section. So we bypass the, the sample playback entirely. And we're going to build an analog synthesizer sound. You can see that I use this. If I edit this, I can actually control the pitch of this sawtooth wave. And I have, because it's uh, generated by the synthesizer section, I have no limitations on sample playback rate that you might have otherwise. So I can control the pitch this way. Now we want to add a filter. So let's go to the next block in the algorithm and assign a low pass filter. That would be a typical assignment for, for an analog synthesizer, but we can really do anything we want to. We can add uh, 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 equalizers and nonlinear shapers and distortion, whatever we want to. But let's start with the filter so that I can show you the control source list. You get a nice, easy introduction to all the, the ways in which you will use control sources. So let's add some resonance and move our low pass frequency. And as we know, we can set the specific frequency of the low pass to, to, the, to the key number or to the specific hertz. And if we um, touch the DSP mod page, we can actually assign mods to this low pass frequency. And I cursor over to the right after finding the frequency, and I have my source and my depth. We've already done this. Again, I'll just, just to review, if I type 1 enter, that's MIDI control number 1. Well, that's the mod wheel. And I move down and assign a depth. Let's give it some kind of depth. And, and now when I move the mod wheel, I have this modulation source. The control source list is deep. The first 127 entries or so correspond to the various MIDI controllers uh, in the MIDI specification, many of which correspond to the front panel uh, preset destinations for these controllable sliders. So I might want the slider B, which is MIDI 13. Uh, to control. I can type 13, and now this slider is now what controls my frequency. Maybe I want to control the resonance with another slider. Why don't I control the resonance with slider C, number 22? Well, let's cursor back to the left, and let's go down to the LP resonance. That's the low-pass resonance. If you want to look again at the signal path and find out where we are, you can see the algorithm page, and we're looking at the tuple low-pass, which follows the uh, synthesized sawtooth wave. I hit edit again and get back to this DSP control, and I'm looking at the resonance, and I hit um, DSP mod, and I can add a modulator. And I will add now MIDI 22. I could type 22, and that will give me MIDI 22, but I could also hold enter and just move the slider in question, and it will go there. Now, this is called intuitive entry, and it's available whenever you're looking at the control source list. I will add for the resonance, uh, 12 dB of resonance on the MIDI control number 22. That means when the MIDI control number 22 is high, my resonance is 12 dB higher. 
So that's a lot of resonance with the control down. It's still pretty resonant because I have a basic uh, resonance set frequency. So I'm going to turn my resonance to nothing and I will have MIDI 22 give me maybe 24 decibels of resonance. So now I have a basic frequency adjustment on slider D and I have a resonant adjustment on slider C. Now, these are uh, MIDI sliders are just, just fine and dandy and we use them a lot, but we might want to automate some things. We might, maybe I want an envelope. I want to shape this sound automatically so that every key has its own uh, envelope. So why don't we turn our frequency all the way down so we can hardly hear anything. And I'll add uh, some resonance with my slider. And now I go want to go to the DSP mod page and I want to set up an envelope to do the, uh, the, do the modulation. In this case I'm going to use source 2 which has an extra depth control. If I scroll on the control source list, that is what this chapter is about. The control source list, all the control sources that you have and what they do. I can scroll through all the 127 MIDI, uh, uh, MIDI controllers and then I end up with special things like uh, mono pressure and uh, we can actually, I'm going to assign a depth so I can hear mono pressure right away. The depth control is off right now and I want to turn it on, which is the first uh, the, the, the first main entry in the control source list is the one called on, and that just means it's always on. Uh, there's no, there is no real control, and it's a good way to set your maximum uh, depths. So here it is. I'm going to set a maximum depth, and now my pressure is controlling. As I press in on the key, I get my control. When pressure is at minimum, there's no depth. As the maximum, I get my adjustment. So that's pressure. We also, you can actually have the pitch wheel control the same thing. Uh, you can also have um, absolute pitch wheel, which actually uses each direction of the pitch wheel as its own control source. You can get, start to get to see already, because this list, we haven't even gone through half the list yet. There's many, many possibilities. Um, the, uh, the clocks, we can have the system clocks divided by four, the system clocks reversed. You can have bipolar clocks divided by four, and then here the clocks divided by two. So basically we're using whatever the, the tempos that are in sync with the current incoming MIDI clocks or with the current playing sequence or with the current playing setups and their arpeggios. We can actually lock this in with the tempo by using that control source. Let's move on. I'm scrolling with my alpha dial, random source. You can hear that every 20 milliseconds there's a new random number associated with that. There are several random sources and special control sources like note state. If the note is in release, and I will quickly add a, a, a little bit of a release to this sound. If the note is in release, then it will get the the, the filter cutoff. So actually, you might be able to hear, uh, might be able to hear that more if I set a longer uh, time. So now the, the note release is actually going to close off the filter. This is actually very powerful uh, for the for the filter. The note state is controlling the filter, and if I don't have the note state controlling the filter, say it's the key state, the key is off, but but uh, the note is also released. But if I hold the key with a pedal, now when I release, the key state goes off, but the note is still sounding. But the filter still closes because the key state is off. If I had less of a depth on this, we can actually hear, here's with the key state on, but I'm holding the notes with the pedal. And when the keys are off, they have a different, they have a different setting. So key state is whether the key's on or off. There are many applications for each of these kinds of conditions, and because this MIDI control source list appears everywhere, whether it's pitch, whether it's frequency, whether it's distortion amount, whether it's the, uh, the control of the delay time of your effect, these control sources are available everywhere. Key number is very obvious. We use it all the time. In fact, as we saw on the DSP control page, every 
uh, DSP uh, input has a specific key tracking already assigned to it, but it's also in the key uh, in the control source list so that you can assign it uh, wherever you're assigning those types of mods as well. Bipolar key number is centered around uh, uh, middle C and goes to negative one at the bottom and goes to positive one on the top. Attack velocity. Again, we have those hardwired in the DSP control section, but you can also assign it here with the depth control. I might say that attack velocity controls my frequency. Let me just set that a little bit. Oh, that's very nice. And if I want to use my depth control, maybe I'll say the mod wheel. I hold enter and hit mod wheel. That's my depth control. Now when mod wheel is at zero, there is no attack velocity effect on the filter cutoff. But when mod wheel is at full, then there is 7,900 cents of effect on my frequency uh, on this low pass frequency. So attack velocity, as we see, is there. I'll turn my source back to on, and let's continue through the control source list. Inverse attack velocity is just the reverse of your attack velocity. Now there might be two ways I could do this. I'm, I'm assigning my, my low pass frequency to be, let's say, at C2, which is low, and my depth control, let's make it a nice even number, 8,000. Let's make it uh, 6,000. And inverse attack velocity is going to get softer. It's going to get lower the harder I hit. Regular attack velocity, higher the more I hit. Poly pressure. If we had a poly pressure keyboard attached to this, the one that responds uh, for each key, as uh, poly pressure, then this engine would respond in that way. As it is, uh, the, the whole keyboard responds with one pressure strip, so I could play a whole key uh, board if I assign pressure, and I just press on one note, and the whole thing, every note that I'm assigning is going to come out. Uh, mono pressure is the way most keyboards are set up to respond, and it's very useful, actually. We have the random sources, as we said. Let's uh, keep going. Release velocity is uh, controlled as well. So. Uh, that can that can control things. Uh, then you have velocity triggers, and now we get to the interesting things: envelopes and low frequency oscillators. So far, we've covered the control sources, including all the MIDI control numbers and the special cases like key number and attack velocity and note state and key state. We've seen how those operate. Now let's use the automation controls like automatic envelopes and automatic uh, oscillators that operate on these controls. An ASR is an attack sustain release generator. An LFO is a low frequency oscillator. And an envelope is a preset uh, uh, level that changes over time uh, that you can, uh, that is uh, very, uh, very programmable. So let's, there's a page associated with each of these because as we said, the layers, the layers have their own complete synthesizer architecture and each control source has its own sources available and those sources can be anything from the control source list. And you'll notice the pages of the program editor contain ways to program your LFO, your ASR, your funds, which are called functions, they're control source functions, and one, two, three different envelopes, and a way to control those envelopes. Next, we'll discuss these automated ways to control your DSP functions. When you select one of these automated DSP functions, like an LFO or an envelope, or a function, there's a page associated with it. I could find it using the more buttons, find the LFO page. Here it is. Or I could also highlight it as it is here and hit edit and I will jump to the page. Each layer has two LFOs available. I'm on the LFO page now and let's program the LFO. I need to assign a shape to the LFO, which can be a sine wave or it can be uh, the, uh, 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 a plus sign, which is um, only only uh, unipolar, goes from 0 to 1. 
and a, a regular sine wave will oscillate between zero and then go to one and then to negative one and back to zero. We might be better off listening to these shapes of an LFO when it's assigned to pitch and not frequency. So let's exit out of our program, go back to our naked saw here, and we will edit, we will put back our filter, and we will set a nice Okay, now we have a We have a nice kind of mellow saw because we've lo rolled it off just a little bit, but I want to operate on the pitch of the sawtooth wave. Okay. Let's assign an LFO to pitch. Give us a little bit of vibrato. So I will say, I can do, use the search function to say L, F, O, and it will find it for me quickly. There it is. And I, the depth control is off. I will turn it on so that I can hit my max amount. And let's say uh, 200 cents, I like. That's uh, two semitones. But I don't hear it. It should be oscillating back and forth two semitones. Why don't I hear it? Well, let's look at the LFO. I highlight it, hit edit. And now I'm on the LFO page. Well, look. I don't have any rate controls or, or uh, shapes assigned yet. So let's assign a shape to it. And let's say it's a sine wave. And the rate control is off, which means it's going to use the minimum rate. So if I turn it up, there we go. There we go. Here's a low frequency oscillator. Now this is a sine wave generator inside the algorithm that's operating on the one parameter I assigned it to, which is the pitch of the sawtooth wave. It's going to go two hertz, which means twice per second. Again, everything is in specific units so we can time our sound design uh, elements very precisely. It's doing more. If I go back to the page for DSP mod, I see the LFO is set to only provide 200 cents, which would be one semitone, but I hear a major third, don't you? That's two, semi that's, that's, um, two semitones. And the reason is, is because the sine wave shape of the LFO is bipolar. It goes to plus one and then it goes to minus one. Now if I wanted to, to make that more specific, I could scroll to one that's called plus sign, and that will just go from one to uh, plus one. Here it is. There we go. And we can hear the shapes of the various LFOs as they change. Here's a square. Here is a triangle, and here is a sawtooth wave. And you can see we can might want to do something really drastic here. Make something drastic. Because we have this analog synthesizer model waveform, we can actually drastically alter the pitch with these LFOs. And now I want, might want to make that a little faster. Well, let's add a rate control to it. Again, here's the control source list. Anything in the control source list can be assigned to be the rate of this LFO. In even itself, I can assign the LFO itself to be its own rate control. But let's say the mod wheel is my rate control, and let's make a maximum rate that is nice and fast. So now I have, on my DSP mod page, the pitch of this sawtooth wave is, it, is, is the source of the modulation is LFO1. The depth control is on, which means it's always going to use the max amount, which is uh, exactly two octaves right now. And I edit the LFO and I see a, a two cycles per second minimum and 9.6 cycles per second maximum. Like that. So here's, um, let me save that. I like that, okay? So here I'm gonna, I hit exit and it's offering me a rename this sound and I will say LFO. This is my first experiment with programming LFOs 
using the VA1 oscillators and the PC3, and I like it, so I will say yes, and here it is saved. Like that. And the Monreal now operates on, the, on, the, on, the, on, on that LFO.